I so want to talk about how an institution like the Barbican is grappling with the word digital. Um, and my role, digital content mm. producer, is one that's only existed for the best part of two years, and I've done it for all of that time. And this is my desk. Uh, it's at the end of a corridor. It's not part of a department. I don't sit within the comms or the marketing teams, nor am I part of the programming teams. I'm literally sort of that. If you walk past, you'd think I was the sort of arts director's PA. Um, and in many ways, what I want to talk about is the gray area that roles like mine, which didn't exist very long ago, fall into in long-standing arts institutions. Um, I think the first thing I should say is that I'm not a curator, and nor is the Barbican sort of new to the notion of grappling with digital. It has for decades dealt with what digital means in the arts, and most recently and most explicitly with this, which is a sort of blockbuster show that takes up our curve gallery called Digital Revolution. I think what I do is respond to, engage with, contextualize our program. And that, that very task poses an interesting question for arts institutions, I think, which is they're doing things now that sort of 10 years ago you might find the BBC doing or The Guardian doing, I think as recently as that, whereas today all three of those places, sort of Front Row or The Guardian Culture Desk or The Barbican, are likely to produce quite a similar piece of content, I hate the word, but content about a piece of art or an event or a cultural theme or theory. And so I don't know what the answer to this is or whether it's a good idea, but we find ourselves me, personally, positioning the Barbican as a broadcaster, as a content creator. If you sort of go along to our blog, you'd find stuff like this. And you don't need to go to, say, our Jean-Paul Gaultier exhibition to sort of enjoy, delve into, explore our Jean-Paul Gaultier app. Uh, and sort of the same is true of all of this stuff. That, in terms of if you just glanced at it, doesn't look that different to a news, a culture news website or a, a resource that lives on the internet. And so this is more an observation than a thought, which is that arts institutions find themselves creating this stuff. Where the Barbican is at at this stage is we're getting sort of quite good, quite good at broadcasting, talking at our audience with material like this. I think the next step is what's the reverse of that? How do we sort of start a meaningful dialogue about our program with our audience through our website? Um, but this is a bit like a sort of shared therapy session. One of my problems, <laughs> one, of, one of my problems with this and it falling under the word digital is that I'm not sure it is, it's a very lazy use of the word digital. I think you could create a short film 30 years ago. What's different about this is, is it's distributed digitally. It's not, this isn't digital art, it's not even digital content. It's content made using quite traditional techniques just with slightly newer te technology. What's What's digital about it is the way we distribute. But I still think there's something interesting in that, which is that what arts organisations, large or small, have now is the opportunity to talk directly to their audiences, that that dialogue isn't mediated via a newspaper or via a traditional broadcaster. And where that poses a challenge, I think quite a good challenge, for our curators, our programmers, is that I think you can adopt a tone... Uh, that is more playful, that is more informal, that's more provocative on here than you can when you sort of look at a gallery wall. I think that when you walk into the Jean-Paul Gaultier exhibition, you will get the sort of written introduction to that show. When you download the app, you'll get sort of Jean-Paul Gaultier popping up and sort of rambling at you brilliantly for 30 seconds on a screen. And I think that one of the joys of this is it liberates curators and programmers to really engage an audience in a way that you can't necessarily do with printed text on a gallery wall. Um, and we're just beginning to realise that. And part of, I think, the importance of roles like mine that sit in these sorts of grey areas is acting as a bridge between the curatorial and programming process and tools like this that talk to audiences. So... I'd sort of call that half of my life um, creating stuff that is about the art 
Um, but one of the things that's happening is that there's more and more work that's designed purely for the browser. It's conceived as art for the internet. I'll just sort of tell you the story behind this. This is a project that will launch in a couple of weeks um, called City of Drones. It's a partnership between uh, a pair of digital artists called Field, John Cale, the recording artist who's one of the founders of the Velvet Underground, and Liam Young, who's a speculative architect. You have to ask him what that means. Um, and you sort of fly around this futuristic cityscape from the perspective of a drone. Um, but what's interesting about it, I think, are two things. One, it's commissioned in partnership with the space, a couple of space people here as well, which is an Arts Council and BBC-funded platform to showcase digital art. And it put, it's interesting for us because we are co-commissioning work that doesn't bring people into the building, that doesn't even live on our server space, but it does something when it comes to fulfilling one of the original purposes of the Barbican, which is as a commissioner, a creator, a platform for avant-garde experimental art. All of these things wind up falling on my desk in a very random way. So you've got stuff that's about art, you've got stuff that is art, um, and then you've got stuff like this, which is uh, last summer, for four weeks, we handed over the entirety of our public foyer spaces to an anarchic troupe of artists, technologists, and entrepreneurs. Uh, and we wound up with sort of 100 different projects throughout the foyers. I think what's notable about this is when we talk about the word digital, in arts institutions, it's still meaning lots and lots of different things. I'm not really sure how to apply the word digital to this, other than we are providing a platform for technologists and artists to talk to one another generate ideas and subvert public space. What that's led to is this opening a couple of weeks ago. It's a project called Fish Island Labs where we, in partnership with a brilliant organisation called The Trampery, who worked with us on Hack the Barbican as well, it's out in Hackneywick and it's a uh, stable of affordable studio space, co-working space and event performance space for artists who use technology somewhere in their practice. All of this is kind of is like the grey area that isn't necessarily falling into traditional curatorial agendas. I think the difference between a curatorial approach to a project and my approach to a project is I didn't know at the start of any of these what on earth this stuff was going to be. Hack the Barbican started by us booking the foyer space, handing it over and just seeing what happened. And the same is true of this. It's a punt in many ways. And so I think if you're a large arts institution, then one of the things that's crucial, and I think it's something that we're doing reasonably well, is just finding ways to take risks, to experiment, to subvert the agenda, and to acknowledge, I think, that there's a community of people who are working at that intersection between sort of traditional art forms and people who are employing technology in their practice, and there's a rich dialogue that's taking place between those communities that can yield quite interesting results.